6. Onagar, the first truth teacher. As the Andonic dispersion extended, the cultural and spiritual status of the clans retrogressed for nearly 10,000 years until the days of Onagar, who assumed the leadership of these tribes, brought peace among them, and for the first time led all of them in the worship of the breath giver to men and animals. Anton's philosophy had been most confused. He had barely escaped becoming a fire worshipper because of the great comfort derived from his accidental discovery of fire. Reason, however, directed him from his own discovery to the sun as a superior and more awe-inspiring source of heat and light, but it was too remote, and so he failed to become a sun worshipper. The Andonites early developed a fear of the elements, thunder, lightning, rain, snow, hail, and ice. But hunger was the constantly recurring urge of these early days, and since they largely subsisted on animals, they eventually evolved a form of animal worship. To Andon, the larger food animals were symbols of creative might and sustaining power. From time to time it became the custom to designate various of these larger animals as objects of worship. During the vogue of a particular animal, crude outlines of it would be drawn on the walls of the caves, and later on, as continued progress was made in the arts, such an animal god was engraved on various ornaments. Very early, the Andonic peoples formed the habit of refraining from eating the flesh of the animal of tribal veneration. Presently, in order more suitably to impress the minds of their youths, they evolved a ceremony of reverence which was carried out about the body of one of these venerated animals, and still later on, this primitive performance developed into the more elaborate sacrificial ceremonies of their descendants. And this is the origin of sacrifices as a part of worship. This idea was elaborated by Moses in the Hebrew ritual, and was preserved in principle by the Apostle Paul as the doctrine of atonement for sin by the shedding of blood. That food was the all-important thing in the lives of these primitive human beings is shown by the prayer taught these simple folks by Onagar, their great teacher. And this prayer was, O breath of life, give us this day our daily food. Deliver us from the curse of the ice. Save us from our forest enemies. And with mercy receive us into the great beyond. Onagar maintained headquarters on the northern shores of the ancient Mediterranean, in the region of the present Caspian Sea, at a settlement called Oban, the tarrying place on the westward turning of the travel trail leading up northward from the Mesopotamian Southland. From Oban he sent out teachers to the remote settlements to spread his new doctrines of one deity and his concept of the hereafter, which he called the Great Beyond. These emissaries of Onagar were the world's first missionaries, they were also the first human beings to cook meat, the first regularly to use fire in the preparation of food. They cooked flesh on the ends of sticks and also on hot stones. Later on they roasted large pieces in the fire, but their descendants almost entirely reverted to the use of raw flesh. Onagar was born 983,323 years ago, from A.D. 1934, and he lived to be 69 years of age. The record of the achievements of this mastermind and spiritual leader of the pre-planetary prince days is a thrilling recital of the organization of these primitive peoples into a real society. He instituted an efficient tribal government, the like of which was not attained by succeeding generations in many millenniums. Never again, until the arrival of the planetary prince, was there such a high spiritual civilization on earth. These simple people had a real though primitive religion, but it was subsequently lost to their deteriorating descendants. Although both Andon and Fanta had received thought adjusters, as had many of their descendants, it was not until the days of Onagar that the adjusters and guardian seraphim came in great numbers to Urantia. This was, indeed, the golden age of primitive man.